robot lady here demonstrating the how to finish up a winter service on a 4.0 elite robot one thing you'll notice is it's all shiny and the fake leather is dark and it looks really good that was because I just gave it the armor all so we like to put this treatment on there because it uh, really lengthens the life of the uh, components the plastic components and it makes it nice and shiny and uh, good for the customer uh, when they get it back they get excited to see it all shiny and this is actually a UV protectant to protect it from the Sun now I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, clean it up with some car wax well it's actually uh, this stuff which is a, a nice car wax that's safe for plastic and this will make it uh, give it a nice scent and also make it super shiny just spray it on everywhere then wipe it in and buff it off For the buffing, you want to just turn your cloth to a dry spot and then just buff until it's uh, completely dry. particular product that I chose it's actually quite hydrophobic so that means the water will bead quite well on it now I'm going to demonstrate how to do the final uh, sensor tests and this is for a deep I'm doing it with the service menu so that's for dealers to use uh, consumers can just do this these same tests in their yard first step is to enter the service menu then find the test motors and test sensors items we're going to start with test motors the first test is the blade test make sure nothing is underneath the robot when you do this test you don't want to do it uh, on a table full of tools for example or any other thing like that you can hear that the blade started it's really not more nothing else to do just make, listen for any very bad sounds like a, a bearing going bad or something like that now I'm gonna do the wheel motor test so this just involves uh, ramping up the speed hundred percent in the forward direction and then again in the reverse direction because the robot does go backwards when it's uh, you know going uh, making its turns etc so it's important to make sure that the wheels are, wheel motors are working in both directions you see how there's a link in the middle I'm gonna keep them linked together because this is just for winter service I don't need to unlink them for that's more for uh, advanced types of testing so here it is at a hundred percent now I'm just gonna go down now it's going backwards There, I'm 100% backwards. So now I'm going forwards because I want it to, uh, to get to zero before I stop the test. There, it's at zero. The next part of finalizing the tests for winter service is to test the sensors. So select test sensors. You can see that there are some boxes there that indicate uh, the sensors. So just as a quick example, I press the stop button and you see the stop lights up. It's easy to test the rain sensor by just using a metal tool 
across the rain sensor uh, metal posts and the rain sensor will light up there we go then for the bump test literally just push in the bump sensor there you go for the lift test that's lift is the way it works on these robots is by uh, the front wheels drop down to determine that the robot is lifted. There's also an inclinometer that's on the motherboard. But effectively, this lift test is verifying that the front wheels are dropping down just fine. There, you see how they lit up? Okay, now for the inclinometer, we do have a plus two degrees. Uh, that's probably because this location is not completely flat. If it was uh, plus 30 degrees or something astronomical like that, uh, then that would mean you would need to recalibrate the inclinometer that is on the motherboard. Um, but the purpose of, uh, for winter service checking, you just lift it up, just verify that, you know, if you tilt it around 30 degrees, it actually tilts and it is wise to do it in all directions. So there, it got 32 degrees. And I'll go down here. Probably another, yeah, 37. And I'm going to lift it up this way. Oops. There's like 25. So it's clearly working. And you can assess that, you know, if the two degrees would be a problem for the particular property. This particular robot is only, it's not running on a sloped properly. It's a flat property, so I'm just not going to worry about recalibrating that small amount at all. So here's a close-up of the test sensor's display. And there's three things that haven't been tested yet. Uh, they are the air marker, which you can see at the top where it says air M and the signal, which would show numbers right here on left and right. Uh, there will be four numbers because on this robot, there are four sensors, one in the front left, one in the front right, one in the uh, back left and one in the back right. So I'm not going to show that right now because I don't have a signal to show it on. I'll save that for another video, but just to explain it, so as long as the air marker is turned on on the particular transmitter that uh, you're using for the test, the, and you're close enough to that transmitter, the air marker uh, sensor LED or light, the box would light up and it would say air M. Then uh, if you put the robot inside the loop for whatever transmitter you're using, You'll see four numbers, typically around, they'll be around 90, but they sort of move around a little bit, and the actual number is not the critical thing. Um, it's that they will be four positive numbers when it's inside the loop, and four negative numbers when it's outside the loop. Then, as a uh, rule of thumb, it's also wise to check, uh, put, straddle the robot on the, uh, on the wire, and if you put the, the wire so, such that it's, you know, down the center of the robot. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So the wire would be like that. Okay, so the two uh, left um, wheels would be out inside the, the lawn and the two right wheels would be outside the lawn. Then what you would see is on the left, those two numbers would be positive. And on the right, those two numbers would be negative, indicating the, those sensors are outside of the mowing area. And then what you do is you rotate, rotate the robot. Let's see, it's just easier to zoom out. Okay, there we go. So now with the robot in this orientation, those uh, th those same numbers that would show on the display down there would now have the two bottom, the two rear sensors towards the back of the robot they would be inside and the two uh, front ones would be outside so then what you can do is rotate the ro robot 180 degrees again one more time 
And then in this orientation, and again, the, this is now the wire would be going like this across the blade, you know, sideways, right? Because we rotated 90 degrees from the way we had it originally. And in this orientation, the two dashed lines towards the right, one on each, one on the left and one on the right, uh, those would be negative, and the two on the left, those would be positive. So what that test is for is to ensure that everything is connected correctly inside the robot. It is conceivable that a couple of those could be reversed or something happened to the wire when you were doing the cleaning and damaged the wire. So these are the things that you can kind of smoke out these problems before giving the robot back to your customer. And you can be 100% confident that the robot is working without even having to run it on a lawn. Uh, so that enables you to do the, a complete checkout uh, after winter service in the dead of winter. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, this video. You make sure you like and subscribe. And uh, we'll look forward to the next one.